Marcus Boyd, and you are here with me on a brand new episode of the Orange Couch Chronicles. I'm me, and this is the Orange Couch. I'm trying to tell you, one day, me and you going to be right here. I'm going to be like, what's up? You're going to be like, what's up? I'm going to be like, how you doing? You're going to be like, how you doing? And we're going to be like, hey. So, you already know what we do here, family. We ask the amazing questions given by somebody from the autism community. I give my experience and I tell you about what happened to me dealing with autism because I've been having it all my life. But And again, all the beats you've been hearing is made by me, Marcus Boy Beats. And you need to tune in every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Um, for a brand new episode of the Orange Couch Chronicles. I need you to like, share, and comment. Because everybody need to be jigging into this. Like, uh, 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 uh. It's like, it sounds like some salsa music, right? You just want to like, uh, 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 you would thought I got like a seal of approval from a president. I'm talking about like, yes, Marcus Leonardo Boyd, you have been approved. But before I go into my experience, I would like to say that whatever I say about foster care is my opinion. You don't have to listen to it. You don't have to like it. It is just my opinion on foster care. Now, um, my hundred nugget. I've been in maybe 17, 18 different foster homes in my whole life. Maybe five or six different group homes. Um, two or three different emergency children shelters in my whole life. Yes, I traveled. You would have thought that I had a, a basketball, um, I signed to a basketball professional team from the way I traveled through foster homes. I'm talking about I was, I was on team after team after team after team after team after team. That means I was in home after home after home, in home after home after home. But I thank God for the Barneses because God gave me the Barneses. Jackie Barnes, Benny Barnes, BJ, Jason, Brand, uh, Brandon, Barron, Raylon, Benita, um, the list goes on. But Sonya, the list goes on. But they gave me that whole entire family when I was very, very, very young. And I, and I was coming from being abused, and I was coming from um, really not understanding myself, but I knew that I had autism, and I was trying to battle that in a sense, and still battle abuse in the same sense. So the Barnes has never looked at me, and to, and to this day, we all grown. They don't look at me like, oh, I was just their foster brother, or foster sister, I mean, or foster child. They look at me like, that's my brother, that's my, that's my son family so we will forever be what it is it's family um they instilled instilled a whole lot of positivity in me you know i think with my foster mother jackie she used to want to introduce me to a thing called non-denominational church that was the best experience in my whole life because I didn't have to wear certain clothes to go to Sunday school. It was a uniform. I mean, everybody looked like a scene off Sister Act Part Two. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, Sister Act Part Two when the when the guy be like, "In Jesus, why?" I mean, like, like that, that part in the in the movie. You know, when they were singing "Joyful, Joyful," and everybody was in street clothes. I'm talking about you would have thought it was a Broadway mu musical because when I went to a non-denominational church and then when they fed every Sunday after church, their fried chicken was so amazing. I thought I saw Jesus every time I took a bite. But um, I think that the Barnes has also showed me stuff like hiking, camping, kayaking. Like they showed me stuff that it was outside. Like, it was not a normal father and son. We playing basketball or baseball. No. 
we we went kayaking. I can't even spell that, okay? We went kayaking and camping. Like it wasn't no lodging. No, we all slept on dirt and 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 little camp gear and stuff. And I, and then they always sent me with my foster father to, to go get the wood and stuff like that for the for the fire. Yeah, don't send me as an adult and we go camping, don't send me to go get the fire and the wood because I got a sleep disorder. So I'm gonna be somewhere asleep, dead in the woods, and you still gonna be like, where's Marcus at? Snoring. So, um, they also instilled in me positivity to believe in myself. It wasn't always peaches and roses. I did a lot of stuff with the Barneses that I regret that growing up I had, you know, with my behavior issues and my transitioning with my autism. But they were so patient. They were so understanding. And I, the reason I left their home is because that at the time, it was a little bit too much for them to be foster parents and deal with the day-to-day -day reality of their own personal lives. But what, what made it so remarkable was even when I went to other foster homes, they used to call me every weekend, every weekend when I was in other foster homes. They used to come visit me and stuff like that. I just never understood why I just couldn't go back with them. I really understood that. But my grandmother, my, my biological mom's mom, she got introduced to the Barneses because we went all to the same non-denominational church, Cathedral of the Holy Spirit. We all went to the same church. My grandma, my biological grandma, and my foster parents went to the same church. One day, they just happened to sit in the same pew. So my foster mom was kind enough to pass the offering plate to my biological grandma. My biological grandma didn't start speaking, saying I'm Mar Mar Marcus's biological grandma. Oh, hey, child, hugs, kisses. I think both of them was crying. It was like a scene from a Lifetime movie. I couldn't place it. But they became friends, exchanged numbers. So then my grandma started picking me up every weekend from the Barneses. And it got to the point where one time, one weekend, she said, yeah, I'm just gonna take Marcus for the weekend. Let me tell you something, okay? My grandma didn't bring me back for six to seven whole months. Not half months, whole months. She didn't bring me back for six to seven months. That was against the foster foster care procedure thingy, but she didn't get in trouble and nothing happened to her because the Barneses knew I was safe and knew that I was in a place where I was loved. And again, that's just my personal experience in foster care. So as we begin what I like to call the Orange Couch Wind Down. <laughs> I'm gonna take a little sip. Okay, I'm gonna take a little sip. Hold on. That's that Java juice. It's amazing. Make you shiver. But we talking about we talking about positive foster care. So in the state of Georgia, where I was a foster child at, I did have positive foster care with the Barneses. They did shelter me, cover me with love, cover me with understanding and wisdom, and they did spank my butt when I needed to spank. It just facts. But right now, we still family, and I'll still do anything and everything for each and every one of them, because I love them. So, if you have a teenager, child, or an adult that's been in foster care, or currently is in foster care, please make sure that if you can, if you have an open situation with your social, with their social worker, please make sure that they're in a good, positive, God-fearing, upbringing foster home. Please make sure that there's no underlining or uncovering abuse going on. And if it is, please have them report it to their proper authority or social worker. Because everybody in, with autism has a voice, and it takes a community to help that voice become stronger. This is a brand new episode of the Orange Couch Chronicles with award-winning autism activist Marcus Boyd. And we're going to shimmy out of here. We're going to be like, uh, 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 uh.